Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick brick wall quilt using just two charm packs. So let's get started. If you are not familiar with charm packs, they are lovely little bundles of fabric that are perfectly curated to go together and they are cut into five inch squares for you. So you have this lovely pack of fabric that you just purchase one little bundle and then you have a ton of different patterns and designs all coordinated to go together. Usually these charm packs are bundles that include 42 five inch squares. So you get a nice variety of fabric in here. Here I am using the New Earth Bundle, and I do have some five inch squares available in my shop if you do need to get some fabric for this project. All right, so to get started, I'm just going to kind of throw these fabrics all together. Now, our quilt is going to have eight squares growing across the top and then 10 squares going down. Now, to get started, I'm going to sew one square to another square. So we're gonna put it right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna do what's called chain piecing. So I'm not gonna snip my threads here. I'm just going to keep on sewing. So I'm gonna get another square and I'm just going to kind of grab whatever's available, just making sure I'm not putting the same two together. So I'll put them right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam. And I'm not gonna snip the threads, I'm just going to keep going. And I'm gonna do that until I get 10 sets like this. And then I'm not gonna snip the threads still, I'm just gonna go back to this hop and pretend these are sewn together and I'll just add another square on and keep working through sewing them and building up until I get eight squares in each row. Now, something a little different I'm going to do with this project is I'm going to set a stopwatch so that I can let you know how long it takes to put a quilt like this together, because I'm sure you're curious. Oh no, I forgot to keep counting how many I sewed. I was just thinking, oh, this is so nice and relaxing and didn't even count. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we just need a few more. All right, so where are we at right now? We are seven, eight minutes in now. Eight, about to be eight. So I have three blocks sewn to each row. So I just need to add five more on. So we're, I don't think we're doing that bad so far. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So I'm just gonna keep adding more squares on and I'm not gonna snip these threads, so. Not snipping the threads and just building this net really helps save a lot of time. However, I'm not gonna keep these threads on here forever. So I am gonna snip them. I normally wouldn't, but what we're going to be doing 
is a little different here after I get these rows pieced. And you may be wondering, what do I mean by it's going to be a little different? So we're not going to make this into, you know, a simple patchwork quilt. We're going to twist it up a little bit. And the little fun trick I'm going to show you, you are absolutely going to love because once you do this little tweak that I'm going to show you, you're not gonna have to match any seams. <laughs> Do you love that or what? <sighs> I love how quickly a quilt can come together if you don't have to spend the time matching all of the seams to get it to line up perfectly. All right, so I'm gonna keep adding on blocks here. Then I'll meet you back after I get them all added on because, you know, um, I think you get it now. I think you can see what I'm doing. All right, so here we are so far. We have this huge web of strips of five inch squares all stuck together. So where are we at so far? We are 25 minutes in. Okay, so don't get mad at me, please. We are going to snip all these threads now, and you'll see why it's going to be tedious. I know these thread clippers are so handy for doing it. You can really go pretty fast if you have one. So snip all the threads, and it's okay. You may... Well, you not may, not may. You will have some charm squares left over. Toss them to the side. We're going to use them later. So don't toss them somewhere where you can't find them. Oh, so trust me. Trust me. I tried to think of a way to like make this whole pattern work without snipping these. I couldn't think of a way. <laughs> so... I might be getting a bit of an arm workout. <laughs> Probably not really. All right, I got all my strips snipped here. I got a big old pile of them. And next we're going to press them. And I was trying to think, should I pause my timer? Because I forgot to turn on my iron <laughs> to heat it up. So I'm just going to be kind of sitting and waiting for that to heat up. Pre-cuts. I don't typically starch them because they can shrink. However, on this pattern, we're not going to be meeting any seams, but I do want the seams that I already sewed to be nice and flat. So I am going to use a bit of steam in my clapper to flatten these seams out. Now, it doesn't matter what way you press them in this pattern because either way, uh, there's nothing going to meet up when we sew all these rows together. We're not going to have any seams meeting. You won't need to make any nice points there. So just let your seam go the way it is wanting to go. It'll make it a little bit easier on you. So once that iron heats up, I am going to start pressing all of these. And I'll show you a little bit of that as I work so you can see kind of how I press seams. But... You know, like I said, press them however you want, press them open, press them all to the same side, press them whichever way they want to fall, it'll all work out fine in this pattern. So like I mentioned a little bit, shrinking can be a little bit of a problem when it comes to cotton fabrics or any fabrics really. So a lot of times with pre-cuts, I don't starch them because they can shrink up and your block might not get to the right size. Now, with this particular pattern, that's not going to be too much of a problem. So I am going to mist my seam here a little bit and press it. And I'm just, that's just water that I'm using. 
and it'll create a little bit of steam and then I'm just gonna throw my clapper on there to get a nice really flat seam. Now I always start yardage when I use it first and press it and then cut it because any shrinking that would have happened would happen at that point. Now with this pattern though I'm not needing these blocks to kind of get to any particular size and I'm hoping if any shrinking does occur it is kind of the same amongst all of these since they're the same fabric so we'll see. Um, the nice thing about this pattern is that seams don't have to meet up so if my rows are a little off because of shrinking I can just square up the quilt at the end um, after I quilt it and everything. So for this it'll work out great if that does happen just it's something to keep in mind in other patterns that you use if you're using pre-cuts and you're building a block that needs to be a particular size. So I'm just gonna work through pressing all of these seams. I'm just going to set it first. And then I like to use my fingers to just kind of, you know, manipulate that top fabric over a little bit, very gently. Press it a little bit, add a bit of water, let it steam up a little bit and add my clapper on. So it's another tedious process. A lot of these processes are a little tedious in quilting, um, but you know, all of them are for a purpose. So what I like to do to keep myself entertained when I'm doing something like this is I will listen to an audio book, I'll listen to a podcast, I'll turn on the TV um, because I'm not sewing, it's not, <laughs> It's super hard to hear the TV over the sewing machine. So I just have something on that kind of keeps me entertained while I do steps like this and it's it helps a lot. So I'm gonna work through pressing all of these seams and then when I am done, I'll show you the next step. And you're gonna be a little bit surprised about what I have you do next because you're like I did all this work and you're kind of changing everything. <laughs> all right so I have all of my strips pressed and I am just under an hour so we're moving right along with this pattern so let me show you what you're going to do next with all of these strips. All right so remember we have 10 of these strips here and what we're going to do is we're going to cut them all in half so remember these are five inch squares so when we cut them in half we're going to cut them at the two and a half mark now i know these little pinked edges are kind of confusing with lining up to cut just stay consistent so if you are going to cut at the valley of the pinked edge, just always cut there. If you are going to choose to cut at the peak of it, always cut there. And if you notice on my strip, oh, this one is very off. I don't know what I did there. So there's a couple things you can do. You could trim this strip down because if it is a little bit smaller, it's not going to matter too much. You're going to want to figure that out when you go to cut or when you go to sew everything together anyway. Um, so what I would normally do is this side looks like it's lined up pretty well. I'll be able to sew that pretty easily. So I know this should be about five inches. So if you see when I line up this strip along the five here, I can cut a little bit of that off there. So let me get everything lined up and trim. Sometimes these squares aren't perfect squares. So just keep that in mind. You know, they, all of them could be off a little bit. You're not the one cutting them. You don't know how accurately it was cut. So you may need to keep an eye on that. Trim them up, it's okay. You know, these strip ideas 
are really nice and forgiving because you're not needing to get a block that is a perfect size. If some of your rows in this quilt are a little bit different in width, then it will just add some interest. So now I'm going to line up the two and a half and I'm going to try and line it up at the valley of these marks just because it's easier for me to see that line on my ruler. That's really the only reason. I'm not even at the two and a half. What am I talking about? <laughs> I'm at the two and a quarter. All right, so I'm just gonna line up across there and kind of get it as close as I can get it. And then I'm just going to cut across and adjust because my rotary, my mat is not long enough to go all the way across. So what I do is I'll find where I cut and get my rotary blade back in there, line up to make sure I'm at the two and a half across everywhere, and then cut it. All right, so now I have a strip. Well, two strips now. And what my idea is, and let me tell you, okay, let's chat for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to be completely honest with you here. When I first did the math, I was thinking, okay, I have 10 rows. So to do what I want to do, I only need 10 little squares left over to make it work. And that's 10 2.5 inch squares. You're gonna get it in a minute. Now I realize that because I only have four leftover squares, I'm not gonna have enough. Because in my head, I kept saying, I only need 10. But because we're cutting all these in half, we need 20. <laughs> Sometimes this happens. So I am just going to roll with it. A lot of time, what I would do is not finish this video because I plotted it all out and just wasn't thinking. And I would redo it with the correct math. So I would adjust how many squares I had so I had enough left over to do what I wanna do. But I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do to make this work. And it's really simple. I'm just gonna to go to my scraps of fabric and find some fabric that will work well with what I am using and make this plan work. So to make this plan work, we're going to need 20 2.5 inch squares. You should be able to get 16 of those from your four leftover charm packs and you're gonna have to go diving into those scraps to get the other four. Math, math, tell me about it in the comments. <laughs> what we're doing here is we're going to take those 20 2.5 inch squares I just hit it. So cut charm pack in half twice. Cut the charm square in half twice. And so from one, we'll have four squares. And I'm going to sew a square on to one side of each row, only one side because let me show you what this does. All right, so I sewed and pressed the 2.5 inch square onto one side of the strip. And then what I'm going to do is take one and just turn it the other way. So now we have that brick pattern. Now these are both from the same original strip, but Remember, we have a bunch of them that we're going to build on here. So I can separate this one down a little bit farther and have this same row that matches up pretty well with this one down farther in the quilt. So they, you know, it will just kind of change where all the fabrics lay that nicely. But because we flipped those sides, the strip is still going to line up very nicely. And then that's also how we are not going to have any seams that we need to meet up perfectly. So this quilt is really going to come together so, so fast. Just what I have to do though, is go search for some of this fabric in my stash. So I found 
a few fabrics that I think will work well with this line of fabric that I will use from my little math boo boo. And I'm going to keep working through cutting these strips in half. I need to flip my mat to the other side so I can line this up a little better, but Sometimes I'm stubborn and just going to keep going with it because it's already how I have it set up. <laughs> so I'm going to keep cutting these in half and I'm going to keep adding these 2.5 inch squares to just one side of each strip. And this will be one of the most time consuming, the last, I mean, the last kind of time consuming part of this whole assembly because after this, we're just going to bring the strips together to complete our quilt top. So let's just take a minute and just look at, this fabric is just gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, I love this fabric line so much. There's so many prints on it that every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, this is my favorite print. I'll look at this one this is my favorite print with all of the foliage. And then I'll see this one and be like, oh, but the background is so gorgeous in that. Or then I see this one, I'm like, the bold, oh my gosh, there's just so many prints in this that are beautiful. After getting all of the strips cut in half and one 2.5 inch square sewn to one side, it's time to start laying them out and getting them in a layout that you like. So you may just be fine with two similar squares meeting up, or you could go through and find one that will break that combination up some. So it's just kind of working through and getting a layout that you like and are happy with and that can take a little bit of time so just be patient and keep laying them out what you the only thing you want to do is alternate whether the first block in the line is a 2.5 inch square or a 5 inch rectangle so just keep alternating those and get a layout that you like and then you'll just start sewing those together. All right, so now we're just bringing our rows together, whether you planned it out or are just winging it. Um, we're just going to start sewing all those rows together. Right now, I'm at about an hour and 23 minutes. Not too bad. I did have to run and put some stuff together for lunch for my kids. So I just decided to just let it go because it wouldn't take long when I was getting them. And um, it's like, that's kind of real life where little things get in, in your way. So I'm just going to line up and sew. So I have it right sides together and I'm just gonna sew across here. One thing I'm gonna do because I don't know when I'm going to quilt this quilt, I have every intention to do it, you know, soon after, but if I don't, that back stitch there will kind of keep those ends around the uh, outside of the quilt together before I can quilt it and bind it. One thing you can do here is pin. Pinning will definitely help keep it a lot straighter for you. And especially with these long strips, it can help it from keep from getting stretched out too much and kind of uneven. Um, I'm gonna go with saving time and just sew across here. And if my strips get a little wonky, um, I'll just trim that up when I square up the quilt after quilting. So see there, isn't that incredible how much stretching can happen when you are sewing? So just keep that in mind. Pinning will definitely help prevent that. Uh, from happening. Like I said, I'm just going to go with it in this instance. So I'm going to keep adding on my strips, making sure I alternate, um, making sure I alternate between a 2.5 inch square 
and a 2.5 inch by 5 inch rectangle. So as long as I alternate those, everything is going to turn out really cute. So all I'll have to do after sewing all those rows on here is press this and my quilt top will be done. After that, it'll just be basting it, quilting it, and binding it. All right, so here is the brick wall quilt all finished. Isn't it just darling? This fabric is perfect for a little baby quilt and one for me because I'm obsessed with this fabric. It is so pretty. All right, well, that was pretty easy. I'm guessing you're wanting to know how much time it took. And I think I actually forgot to turn off the timer because I was so excited. So let's see where it is at. So we're at two hours and 21 minutes-ish because I didn't turn it off. Um, but let me turn it off now. So that is not too bad, I don't think. Um, I didn't stop it when a few things got into my way. I had to run downstairs and throw some food in the oven and things like that. But that's kind of what happens in real life anyway. Little things interrupt you. So I just kept it rolling. But isn't it darling? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Let me know in the comments if you plan to make one. And you can also check out my Etsy shop if you are interested in these charm packs that I used here or any of the other ones in my shop. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!